Our next speaker, um, in the meantime, uh, please, Jana, join, join me here, uh, is Jana Mokke, who is Head of uh, Library Services Development Center at the National Library of Estonia. And she's going to present the work that National Library here has been doing uh, with application of AI. And uh, there is several of them. And we'll be watching carefully how, fair, how the fairness features in, in your work. And we'll come back to those questions afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please, Jana. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, indeed, as the National Library of Estonia is the host of this event, I'm happy to take an opportunity and talk about our library's activities in the field of AI. I will give you a brief overview of our undertakings and I promise I won't go focus on, on technical details. But first I would like to thank Oet Wellsberg, uh, who was the first presenter today. Uh, those who missed his talk, he made a wonderful introduction to Estonian government's uh, strategic goals in order to boost the development of AI in Estonian public sector and, and even more to foster a public-private partnership. Uh, at least I can say that the strategy <clears throat> and the programs uh, that were initiated as a result of it actually opened the AI door for us. And it has been a fascinating ride. So, what have we been up to? Uh, let us begin with the customer service. Uh, firstly, I would like to mention a bureaucrat, a network of uh, applications which enable citizens to use public services with uh, virtual assistance. Since it was already introduced in the first presentation by Oit, uh, and, and you were hopefully able to see an introductory video as well, I'm not going to dive into details. However, I am proud to say that uh, National Library is part of the development team. Um, <clears throat> we, jo we joined the project at the beginning of this year with two other public institutions, uh, which were Estonian Police and the Consumer Protection Authority. And in, the, in addition, there is a private company as a developer. The purpose of this uh, project through the lens of the library is to apply the bot to reply the questions of library users. The questions uh, the, the app would be able to answer uh, would be, for example, when I can visit the library, what would be the dining options in the library, how can I become a user, and even more, uh, we hope that the bot will be capable of searching for a particular item from the e-catalogue of the library. Uh, for example, if the customer asks, uh, asks whether the library has available a novel Lord of the Rings, the bot actuates a search in the catalogue and delivers a list of items as a result. However, it won't place an order. Instead, if the customer would like to borrow an item, he or she will get the instructions how to place an order. But if the customer still should express the feeling on confusion, uh, the real human will interfere. So what would be the be uh, benefits uh, for the customers? Uh, firstly, uh, and, and the fo foremost, is uh, that the library will, uh, will become available in 24-7. <laughs> and finally, someone is volunteering to search the catalogue. Uh, regarding the library itself, uh, 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 firstly, saving the time and money. Uh, we do not have to allocate resources to answer questions that are frequent, simple, and in large numbers, but require a significant amount of manpower, though. Uh, library will get analytics of the customer's questions and inquiries, and that could be used as the insight to develop and enhance the library services. Uh, now I would like to continue with the next subject, that is copyright. Mm, as the copyright was mentioned in one of the earlier presentations, not only mentioned, but, uh, but, but uh, uh, talked about longer, I must emphasize that we, like every other cultural heritage institution, uh, have dealings with it as well. National libraries collect and preserve the national cultural heritage, and that brings a large number of tasks upon us. Among these, uh, there is also a need to find out the date 
when the term of the protection of copyright of a work uh, will expire. Such need is mainly derived from the digitization projects, as well as from the customer inquiries. Well, there might, of course, be other needs as well, uh, but those I mentioned are dominant in our case. Usually, the calculation of the date is uh, based on the metadata that is available in the bibliographic records of National Bibliography. However, uh, sometimes additional research has to be done, whether to validate the data or fill in the blanks in the metadata. Calculating uh, the expiration date is usually a manual process, mm, uh, since sometimes uh, there might be a huge amount of authors involved in creating work, calculating the date might become a very time-consuming process. So again, to save time and money, uh, the library decided to test a new tool for its staff. So what does the cal uh, calculator do? Firstly, it validates upon the request if the bibliographic record has sufficient amount of data available. If there is sufficient data available, it calculates the date when exactly the term of protection expires. Then it delivers the result on the screen showing the date uh, when it will arrive. Uh, the result will be on the screen. Uh, we, we won't enrich the metadata file, though. Uh, in case the data is not sufficient, the calculator delivers a relevant message. Due to lack of data, we are not able to, and, and three dots. Uh, this application uh, has been built in-house. Uh, when we talked about bureaucrat, it is, uh, we have a developer for that. Uh, for us, it took approximately three months in total to finish the work and launch it in the sandbox of National Library's electronic catalogue. And since then, it has been there for our staff to use it in their daily workflows. What were the main learnings for us? Well, uh, first of all, it's not an AI, neither a uh, machine learning application. It is built on rules and algorithms. It's very simple. And by following the carefully set up rules, it indeed helps to reduce manual work and, and save time. However, most problematic has been, like always, like we all know, the data quality. Unfortunately, there are too many blank spots in the bibliographic records, which seriously affects the work of the calculator. The calculator is just not capable of calculating the date if the birth dates or death dates of the authors are missing. Uh, and while it heavily relies on the data, we have discovered that there are too many errors in the bibliographic records. It's not a surprise, of course. It, 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 it just, uh, it's just very sad. And that um, uh, leads the calculator to deliver wrong results. And that is actually the reason why we haven't gone public with a calculator so far, regardless it works. Now, uh, let's uh, go to the data richness and content analysis. And I would like to introduce you our uh, pilot projects for automated subject indexing. Uh, automated uh, subject, uh, uh, well, before I continue, I would like to mention that when we started with the following project, it was the first AI initiative in our library. And therefore, uh, we probably had too high expectations in terms of the results. Uh, when we started the project, of building an AI prototype, we uh, stated a few hypotheses. Firstly, the manual tagging is not always relevant. Uh, what I mean by that, it depends on the knowledge of the particular cataloger. For example, if I have deep knowledge in genetics, which I don't, but need to index the books uh, on labor, uh, labor law, uh, it will definitely have an effect on the result. The manual tagging is not always consistent. I mean uh, that similar works issued in different time 
might be labeled with different subject keywords because the work was done at different time and by different catalogers. Uh, the manual tagging as such is not user-oriented. Well, we as the librarians live in our own organized world. And in the context of subject indexing, uh, it sometimes has not much to do with the user's understanding of the keywords they would prefer to use. In, additions, in addition, uh, librarians have set up a certain methodology and principles to index library material. And that, of that, uh, our customers, unfortunately, do not know anything. Uh, fourthly, the manual tagging is time consuming. According to the research, it takes 10 to 15 minutes on average, minutes on average for a human to index a book. And related to that, the manual tagging is expensive. By stating these hypotheses, uh, we were hoping to address them all and find a solution to overcome the shortcomings by developing an uh, AI tool. So we decided to test uh, uh, with a prototype uh, and, and answer the questions whether the automated subject indexing would be uh, possible at all, whether the tool could provide satisfactory results, if it could help to save time and money for the library, and if it could help to improve the quality of, uh, of uh, subjects, and if it could be integrated into the daily cataloging workflows. Uh, we decided to work with uh, books in Estonian language. Uh, that were mostly published in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, the oldest of them was published in 1917. The youngest one were published in 2019. The main criterion uh, for selection was that the items needed to be in either in public, public domain or defined as an open access by the rights holders. So uh, with that decision, we ended up with almost 10,000 books. And that's not too much to train an I am, I AI, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, it took us about seven month, months to finish the project. One of the deliverables uh, was a prototype so that we could evaluate the results of the project. You can find it, find it on the web, it's publicly available, and everyone can test it. Uh, but while testing, please keep in mind that, uh, uh, that it was trained by using mainly non-fiction uh, published in Estonian language. Uh, so after finishing the project, what, project, uh, what were, were our findings? Uh, sure, the automated subject indexing of Estonian language material is possible. It's not the question at all. Uh, but regarding the results of testing, the catalogers did not, however, consider these satisfactory and claimed that the results were causing extra confusion. Well, we need to keep in mind that there were only 10,000 books that was used as a training material and that probably affected, uh, affected the, the models uh, a lot. But to overcome the bias of the cataloger, the results were also tested with the ordinary users. Uh, they had to evaluate the tags assigned by the catalogers and then the tags assigned by the tool. And it turned out uh, that on average, all users evaluated the keywords that were added by the catalogers a bit higher than the keywords assigned by the tool. Uh, one of the goals of the developing uh, the indexing tool was to save resources. For a cataloger, like I said in the beginning, it takes approximately 15 minutes to index a book. But for the pot, it takes about one minute to predict keywords for a book of any size. Furthermore, uh, the pot does not need to rest, does not eat, does not have to have a cup of coffee break or have a cigarette. It can work 24 hours a day and seven days a week. 
So uh, the results of the whole project uh, demonstrated that it's too early to integrate the automated process into libraries' daily workflows. However, it is not absolute. Uh, we believe that it would be possible in the future if to continue training and in enhancing the models. And we continue. Only we are focusing on the articles now that have been published in Estonian daily, weekly, uh, monthly newspapers, journals and in other serials. Currently, uh, there are more than 7 million articles in our digital archive and this number is growing on a daily basis. Um, of that 7 million articles, only 1% has some kind of tax. Some of them have been added by the customers uh, who use randomly chosen words or phrases. Other articles have been indexed by the librarians who use uh, Estonian subject thesaurus as an ontology. With this project, we need to find a solution how to automatically tag these articles without humanly interference. And by the March or April next year, we should have a prototype ready to evaluate the work of the AI. I, I really have my fingers crossed. Now, let me say a few words about the future as well. Mm. In our pocket list, uh, there is a dream uh, with which we want to address the data quality issue um, on the very basic level. Uh, we wish to uh, work on the bot that would be able to create the bibliographic records, of course on a basic level. If we talk about the complicated ones, uh, then, then it's, it's a huge task. But this bot we are dreaming about uh, should be able to scan a digital document and extract data such as title information, authorship, publishing information, standard numbers such as ISBN, ISSN, and insert information into a data file that could be used to create bibliographic records in, into the library management system. I don't know if it's possible, but I'm really hoping that it, uh, we can at least start with this project. And of course, this uh, bot should be able to analyze the content of the document and assign relevant subject indexes. Well, now I'm uh, reaching to the conclusions. Uh, you might uh, probably think, why are we doing it all? Well, first of all, we are eager to search for the ways how to reduce the amount of manual work as much as possible. And secondly, uh, there are basically two options to approach this issue, either to build your own solution from scratch or use uh, or purchase the software from the market. We decided to develop our own tools. And why? Well, you see, we need to take into account that of 7 billion people living on Earth, only 800,000 speak Estonian. And I think it's clear that we just have to take care of our language and culture, and this is one way of doing it. Thank you. Thank exactly you, Yana. 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Really impressive. You're taking the AI on as a library on, on really comprehensively on, on all sorts of level, facing the customer, but also uh, doing the, so let's say, the traditional tasks of a, of a librarian. Uh, in your talk, the, the money featured quite a lot. Uh, save money um, mm -hmm. and save effort and save time on, on doing something. Do you think that these things balance out, that the cost of developing an AI solution uh, is less than the time that you save or, or the cost of, of work? at the library that you save. Have you, have you analyzed this at all yet? Uh, sure, it's a, it's a good question. We have thought about definitely, but at the moment, uh, since we, are, we have been, like, let me say, financed by the EU structural funds and government, mm -hmm. we more like uh, think about the opportunities that arise from these, uh, these projects and, and, uh, and programs than actually 
uh, doing the business analysis, whether it is uh, really okay. a return of investment. What do you think mm -hmm. the librarians will do with, uh, with all the free time? They now have longer lunch breaks or more often coffee no, no, and no. cigarettes? Or? They need to do much uh, something different, a smarter word. Yeah. Smarter word. Yeah. Okay, we have a question here that asks, uh, how does the tagging bot decide what is uh, that is required to add a new keyword that is not already in the national thesaurus? Mm -hmm. um, and how are new trends and new vocabulary at all addressed by this? So. Yeah, this is something we discussed about during we had our pilot project. Mm -hmm. And then we decided that since it's a pilot and it's very, very much focused on this particular titles and particular ontology we are using, Estonian subject thesaurus, that we won't concentrate on the new, uh, new terms and new content mm -hmm. that is coming. We need to find out, uh, find out the answers to our questions. But if we, we are going to the next stage of these uh, projects, then we probably need to find solution for this issue as well. Mm -hmm. So you're really prototyping at the moment. I'm also mm -hmm. interested in, um, in the results of, uh, as you said, ordinary users evaluating the uh, subject headings assigned by the AI. Um, just sort of following from the discussion of fairness we had uh, in the previous uh, talk, uh, and you said that users liked the uh, subject headings or keywords assigned by, by AI. Could it be that uh, the machine can be more unbiased than the human cataloger um, who definitely will also be biased by, by something when approaching a, a text. Was there any, any difference on, on that level? Do you think that uh, fairness and, and bias is something that we could measure, whether the human, between human catalogers and the uh, keywords assigned by the machine? Mm, it's, it's a com complicated question. <laughs> um, I wanted to say that uh, that training of a of a AI is uh, is well, it's not an AI like like Ben Ben said. Um, well, training uh, depends on the material we are putting in and, and all the all the rules and and different uh, kind of um, uh, different di different things we put into this, uh, this these models uh, and. I, I think we can't avoid the bias. It, it, it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you yeah. should uh, and consult with Helen uh, uh, from a previous talk about how mm -hmm. to measure the, the bias yeah. in there. Uh, as a library, <clears throat> uh, now thinking of, of other institutions watching you uh, here, what kind of competences does it require from a library to, to start an AI project? This is not you know, know-how mm -hmm. or skills that, mm -hmm. that a library typically, or any memory institution typically uh, has. You've mentioned both uh, partners from outside, technology partners, and your own IT who have helped to, to develop these solutions. So uh, throw some light, please, a little bit on, on how these competencies are, uh, are shared between the library and the partners and, and how they're developed in the library. Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, uh, it is important to have a member who knows the data, who knows the collections that mm -hmm. you have in the library. Uh, it is good to have uh, someone who knows what is data, what, how is, is, it, uh, is it working, how, who understands the data. Uh, it could to have a data steward. Maybe it is super cool to have a data scientist in, on, on the board. But if you don't have such kind of stuff, then to have a person with the programming skills would do the work. In case you have an opportunity to outsource the development and, and the, the knowledge uh, relating to AI and machine learning. Well, what was the next question? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> uh, do you think that it's mandatory, important, or you know, nice to have for a memory institution to build their own capacity in this area, their competencies? Is this a must, or 
I, I wouldn't say you can choose whichever way you 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 desire or, or prefer. We have desire. We have chosen the way that we don't. We have basically two, three people who are managing this mm -hmm. field and have a, have a really small team, like a brain trust, <laughs> in, in a sense, and and outsource all the all the knowledge and and expertise outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're still at the prototyping phase. Do you think that there'll be a, a kind of full live implementations that will just, you know, I really, carry on ungoverned? I, yeah, I really, really hope so that eventually, at least with these articles, uh, mm -hmm. uh, indexing uh, tool, I really hope that we get into the live, uh, mm -hmm. live environment and we can start tagging the articles really without the human interference. So it's fully automated process. Okay. I really do hope so, but I don't know if we ever, when we get there. <laughs> okay, sounds very good. We'll invite you back for the, uh, for the next uh, seminar in this series and, and then you can report on, on how it went. Mm -hmm. I think now we're ready for a, a short uh, break. Uh, if you have the opportunity, go and have lunch. Uh,